Good evening, everyone. This is Atrari Namir from Canadian Pakistani Narrative. I'm here with my dear friend, Rana Omer. And uh, shortly, um, we have um, MP uh, Brampton Center, Shafkat Ali, um, for joining us. Uh, and he'll be telling us about his recent trip to Pakistan and what did he assess and how did he, uh, you know, plan to assess and along with assessment, like what kind of support he took it to Pakistan, what is needed there, what's going on there, and what is the current government of Canada uh, doing it in support of those floods. So shortly, uh, Mr. Shafkat Ali. Absolutely. So yes, as uh, Aryan mentioned, uh, that uh, we'll be talking about the flooding situation in Pakistan, which is uh, definitely really, very bad. And I guess uh, in my lifetime, I have never seen things going that bad in terms of the floods and everything, right? Absolutely. It's unfortunate um, yeah. that uh, we are facing this catastrophe. But I'm uh, also very happy as a being a Canadian of Pakistani region that, uh, you know, Canada is uh, helping out in a forefront in our Absolutely. current government, which is basically a liberal government of Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're taking this stance exactly, and they're trying to provide all the support like financially and in the other ways. Uh, they can do and it was a very good step to have uh, these mps uh, go and visit and observe it firsthand so they have a better idea absolutely and one of them was uh, mr shifkat ali and uh, he has been a great supporter of the community absolutely. even before he came to the office like exactly. we have witnessed that in his past that how he has yeah. supported the community and we are very happy and excited to know that you know what he was one of the main guys who went out there uh, and to take this uh, you know i would say uh, it's a very good step in a way to show that our how our MPPs and MPs and the government is taking a positive approach, right? And yeah. our people being in that office is uh, doing the crucial role. Yeah. You know, because they can understand better because they belong to that country. They have come from there. They have better understanding, uh, you know, the, the, the demographics, the people, the culture. Um, so, yeah, uh, that is um, very welcoming. And I really appreciate uh, this step by Mr. Shifkat Ali, his associates, and the current government of Canada, especially the Liberal government. Exactly. You know, who came forward and they did that. And they did that. And let's hear more about uh, his uh, trip to Pakistan. And of course, uh, it was um, uh, mainly Mr. Uh, MP Harjit Singh, Minister of International Development, uh, um, with the um, MP Shafkat Ali from Brampton Center and MP Ikra Khalid and MP Salma Zahid. So right now we have, uh, as we mentioned, uh, MP um, Shafkat Ali from Brampton Center with us. Uh, we'll be asking him how was his visit, uh, what kind of things he experienced over there. Um, so let's not waste time and go towards um, Honorable MP Shafkat Ali. Welcome to Canadian Pakistani Narrative Special Session. Um, uh, Shafkat Bhai, how are you? I'm pretty good. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Rana Omer Saab and uh, Aryan, uh, for your time and uh, your contribution for uh, great causes. I truly appreciate uh, your hard work. Always, uh, you come forward to for uh, for for the good causes, and appreciate your time today. Thank you so much uh, for your time as well. Thank you so much for joining. And yes, we want to hear the things because um, I was following you on social media and I was watching that uh, you were visiting um, uh, the, the, the affected areas um, uh, with the honorable MPs and uh, you guys met the officials as well. So again, um, we would like to know what are the updates? What is the situation? What is the government doing? And what 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 are the things happening? Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's uh, always to uh, always great to go to Pakistan. Uh, but, uh, you know, this time it was uh, in, a, in a very difficult situation. But I'm glad that I had an opportunity to to be there. So I just um, uh, uh, before I get into it, I, I just want to give you um, the background of uh, the situation there and what is happening and uh, uh, what is our government doing, how this um, uh, you know, trip got together, and what is our um, observation from there, and how how did we spend our time there? So, may, um, I will be um, giving some details, and uh, then you know, if you have any questions, uh, yeah. then you you can ask me. But this this would be a little longer, uh, and uh, um, I just want to um, give give you that update the uh, to the and the viewers. And I, I like to thank uh, to the people. I like to thank thank all the people who are watching this time uh, because it's, it's really crucial to have these uh, information. Yes, you were saying something. I was just saying the screen is yours, time is yours. Please feel free to take <laughs> as much of your time because we really want to know what is happening. And you know what? It's a responsibility for us as a Canadian citizen and yes. obviously you as a Canadian official uh, to give all the updates, right? Because there's always a lot of queries, questions, and concerns. So please go ahead. 
Thank you, Aryan. Uh, friends, since June, Pakistan had experienced nearly three times higher rainfall than the average. Flooding and landslides had caused massive displacement, damage, and devastation, affecting more than 33 million people. On August 19, Canada contributed to the initial funding of US 33 million for, for, from the UN Central Emergency Response Fund to be used for health, nutrition, food security, and water sanitation services in flood affected areas. As the rain continues into late August, on August 29th, in order to support the international response to this emergency, the Honorable Harjit Singh Sajjan, Minister of International Development and Minister Responsible for the Pacific Economic Development Agency of Canada, announced five, five million uh, in funding for humanitarian assistance. That was five million initial uh, funding. Nine days later, a group of us left for Pakistan to assess how Canada could be assist. Canada could best assist the people of Pakistan in the face of the dis disastrous flooding. And I a credit goes to Minister Sajjan for realizing and taking this initiative to go on the ground to see what is the real what is the reality on the ground. We left on Wednesday, September 7th and returned just three days ago. Ms. Minister Sajjan, my colleagues, MP Salma Zahid and MP Ikra Khalid and I met in Islamabad and received briefings from Canadian High Commissioner and her staff, and from the key players in the government of Pakistan. We met with officials at the high, highest level, the Prime Minister and the several ministers, as well as government officials, most directly involved in the dealing with the crisis. We flew to some of the most affected areas and met with displaced people and Canada's humanitarian partner organizations staff working on the ground. We ab observed the humanitarian response underway firsthand, gaining a better understanding of what the people of Pakistan are going through. What we witnessed was truly heartbreaking. We visited the flood affected areas in Sindh province. Uh, we flew from uh, almost two hours by a military helicopter from Sakhar to Dadu. During our uh, aerial observation, I didn't see any areas which were not flooded. No roads were visible. Thousands of acres of crops are underwater. Food and supply shortages are already evident. On September 13th, our Prime Minister announced that Canada will allocate an additional 25 million of funding in response to the impact of flooding in Pakistan and to support development projects in the country. At the same time, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced that the government of, uh, government of Canada would match donations to humanitarian coalition in response to flooding in Pakistan. Every donation made by individuals to humanitarian coalition and it me its members until September 28, 2020 will be matched up to maximum of 3 million. Canada's humanitarian coalition brings together leading humanitarian organizations to offer Canadians a simple and effective way to help during international humanitarian disasters. The humanitarian coalition's member are, are following. Uh, I can name them: uh, Action Against Hunger Canada, mm -hmm. Canada Food Grain Bank, mm -hmm. Canadian Lutheran World Relief, okay. Care Canada, Doctors of the World Canada, Humanity and Inclusion Canada, Islamic Relief Canada, Oxfam Canada, Oxfam Quebec, Plan International Canada. Save the Children Canada, and World Vision Canada. Uh, 
when when I was flying uh, from um, from uh, Dadu Sakar to Dadu, and the amount of water like it's from eight to ten feet water standing there, and it has nowhere to go out for drainage. It was really heartbreaking, and water was just five kilometers away from Dadu city. We had a chance to go into a, a, a shelter, which was a school, where about a thousand people living in rooms and in tents. And those people, a few weeks ago, they were living in their own homes. And they, that, they were displaced. It was really heartbreaking to see. Um, I went to um, their medical camp and asked, uh, doctor, do you think, do you have any shortage of medicines? And he goes, Panadol is the most needed at this time. Yes, there is a shortage of medicines and um, food because uh, those, those crops are underwater. They cannot have more cultivation because the water is there. Uh, I don't know how long it will take to drain that water. And uh, there's, there's, uh, there's a fear of uh, food insecurity, food shortage down the road uh, after effects. And um, at the same time, um, we had a chance to visit uh, a facility uh, to, which that is a warehouse built uh, by uh, Canada contributed, Canada, Australia, and Japan with their collaboration to have uh, to deal with the emergency response to, uh, to to store the emergency response item there. So, which was very uh, helpful to deal with the situation to to send out the tents to people to send out those nets for uh, to to uh, protect people from dengue so um, uh, it it was um, it was good to be on the ground to see uh, reality uh, the in the last 30 years pakistan didn't see that sort of situation and uh, it will take a long time what? to recover from this. And I don't think Pakistan can alone uh, would be able to provide uh, those means to put those people back to their homes. Uh, I think it's about more than a million homes being destroyed. It would be big challenge. And I think it's... Uh, some of the areas, uh, the land was, it was drought before um, rain started. And it, those areas the, with the water has, it's from the rains, not from the flood. Yeah. Because flood from uh, upper side comes and it goes into rivers and ocean. But it was, the, I, I've asked a few people, their observation was, we we felt that this uh, flood is coming from the sky, and on certain areas in Sindh, where, where um, I was able to visit along with my minister Sajjan and uh, Salman Zaid, MP, that area is it's not above the surface of uh, uh, ocean or the river. It's a little bit below the surface. So water has, has nowhere to go, which means you cannot have more crops, which means that water will uh, uh, stay there for a long time uh, because it does not have um, uh, drainage, which means waterborne diseases. A dengue is already on rise and malaria. So which means uh, you need more um, foods and medicines. And there is a dire need of that. So, so I, 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 uh, I'm, I'm going to conclude with that one request to all Canadians. Um, 
first top priority is to send the medicines. That is a more and most important at this point. If I categorize what is the first need is a uh, medicines as a top priority, then clean water, then um, food, and then uh, the list goes on and on. So I would conclude uh, my observation on this uh, with, with this and uh, request uh, everyone to please come forward and help the people of Pakistan in this uh, heartbreaking situation. So MP uh, Shafkat Ali, uh, how much uh, have we contributed altogether as the Canadian government uh, to Pakistan floods right now? Uh, Canada initially, um, uh, the Minister Sajan announced um, five million of additional funding, and then while we were there, uh, our Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced the twenty-five million additional funding and three million of matching funds uh, through certain organizations through humanitarian coalition, uh, um, uh, which uh, it it becomes like a, around thirty-three million. And uh, also, um, uh, the minister um, Sajjan uh, announced 20 million, uh, 20 million of funding in response to the impact of. Uh, no, sorry, just give me a second. Um, yes, uh, the, the 20 million contribution to the global polio eradication um, initiative via the, via World Health Organization and UNICEF to support polio eradication efforts in Pakistan. Um, that that this announcement came last uh, last week as well. Right. So since you come from the ground zero, you have the better idea, like, you know, actually a better idea from everybody who's actually here. And, but they're trying to help, right? They, they wanna help, they wanna come out and they wanna see whatever they can do like financially or any other ways. So what would you suggest, what would you advise to the organizations who are here or the public, like who are unaware of the situation because they are not there? Um, um, the, what what needs to be done? So all these organizations who are trying to fundraise here, the individuals who are trying to fundraise here, how do they think they can support, um, you know, the government at the moment? Uh, to support Pakistan, you know, on a state level, and if they would go rather their self uh, through their own organization, what's needed the most there? So first of all, um, I would uh, uh, suggest that uh, they should, uh, if if they're going to um, contribute in terms of donations, they should um, uh, prefer those organizations which are already uh, in, in uh, where who are included into the list for the okay. matching fund. So yeah. right. me, that means if you're giving um, uh, your money through those organizations, your dollar, uh, uh, let's say you, you've uh, contributed $100, yeah. it goes $200 because the government matches. Right. Uh, uh, just we, we need to see that if we, how fast we can reach up to that 3 million um, uh, maximum uh, uh, matching fund limit. And which is uh, the last date is September 28th. Right. Uh, you know that that is uh, first thing, and second thing, if 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 you want to donate through any other organization which you think it's um, working on the ground, uh, you you should do so. Um, and then, if you also want to send um, medicines or other food, there is. Um, uh, I was talking to um, high um, uh, count, uh, acting council general uh, here in Toronto. They they have uh, arranged. The flights for that, uh, they can arrange. Uh, you reach out to them, and they can arrange um, the to to uh, deliver those uh, medicines and other uh, means. And we also had a chance to visit um, uh, a national disaster management team uh, in Pakistan. Uh, we actually had a meeting, and I, um, I think it was impressive to see their network because it's uh, so massive uh, impact. And uh, certain areas where um, I don't think uh, certain organization can reach because, for example, in upper areas uh, mm -hmm. where the bridges uh, collapse, roads are not there, train uh, railway tracks are uh, kind of uh, underwater. So the only um, uh, means of providing services, I think, is the forces there. And mm -hmm. they, they have very uh, organized network of uh, providing uh, um, uh, um, you know, help to the, 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 the,
Yes, or absolutely. you know other way you can you were not able to reach yeah, yeah, so I, and then uh, 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 because there were so many organization working on the ground and i had this question uh, that how they they um they collaborate that their their efforts not being um, uh you know duplicated and okay. i asked this question how um uh, does it work uh, so all organization they work with the with the uh, national disaster coalition or uh, local uh, governments so they work uh, with them and they are given a task that uh, what sort of service needed where and then they can they provide those service in that area so uh, which means that there, there's no duplication of the services so okay. uh, I, I think it's um, uh, that is my my um, request to everyone uh, to um, uh, you want to send the cash or uh, food i think it's uh to buy from there is uh better than buying from here because yeah. you save cost and mm. uh you also supporting economy there absolutely you're you're absolutely right um and the, the thing which i was actually uh you know watching on social media as well that you guys met the officials in pakistan as well and as uh, you told us the your whole uh, um uh experience and um, while visiting you uh, visited the affected areas as well um, talking about the funds which Canada is issuing uh, to Pakistan right now and you mentioned earlier that this is not something which will be um, I mean to say this disaster uh, it will take I would say years and years to recover so is there any plan for the future as well that these are the funds which are issued right now uh, like in future definitely pakistan will be needing more funds as well so is there any strategy or plan you know for that or you guys are connected to the officials uh, in pakistan for the future strategy as well i you know i must give this credit to minister sajan mm -hmm. uh, his vision and the uh, prime minister and our government because we know that this would not uh, be uh, this is not something it would be over tomorrow yeah it will take time and uh, uh, this is just like it's it's in the beginning. What you do, you deal with the emergency yep. situation. Um, obviously, these people who have lost their homes and the roads, who's, who's been uh, uh, flooded away, and the bridges. It's 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 uh, it, it it will take time. And every time you're doing something, it's um, you do assess at the time what is what is the need for for example in upper areas um, people have lost their homes um, and it's a weather it, it's a kind of cold it's a winter coming there and they have no um, uh, there's uh, no shelter and heating and those sort of things so need would be there it's different than uh, need would be yeah. in in Sindh or Balochistan Right. So every area would have, for example, in, in Balochistan, is uh, like in, in Sindh, there's a water. They need, um, they need some sort of assistance uh, to drain that water mm -hmm. so mm, people can go back to their homes. So every area has a different need. And I think it's um, our, our uh, approach is uh, to, uh, to support uh, on need basis. And not only this, and down the road to me, it's um, uh, uh, we all agree on this because the, uh, Pakistan has w less than 1% uh, contribution in gas emissions, but he paid a big price due to um, the climate. Right. And this, this could happen to anyone, to any That's... country. So uh, we, need to, we need to be ready. We need to prepare ourselves to deal deal with these uh, uh, emergency situations. So I think it's a uh, world needs world need to come together and uh, to assess the situation and support uh, on on uh, the basis of um, the need at the time. So how are you seeing the international response on this calamity? Like just the way Canada is stepping up and like leading it from the front. Um, are you guys getting any support from the other countries? I, I think it's a, it, it it's making difference. Uh, one of the reason uh, uh, out of this was that to get media attention, because I don't think that it's uh, even in Pakistan media wasn't fair. First two weeks uh, there's there was not much um, 
of coverage. Uh, coverage. And uh, now we see that more uh, delegates are coming and more media coverage is um, it's, it's, it's coming to media's attention. And uh, I think it's um, uh, even minister is willing to, um, uh, you know, within his counterparts uh, to start the conversation that uh, because he was on the ground and he, he saw that on first hand. So uh, it, it is um, much easier for him to convince people that look what Pakistan uh, is in dire need and we all need to come together to help uh, to rebuild it, to deal with it. Absolutely. And um, we, we our roots are from Pakistan. And definitely, I'm sure visiting Pakistan in a normal situation and visiting Pakistan um, as an official uh, in these kind of circumstances would have been very, very heartbreaking for you to see things like this. And I guess you might have never visited those areas before, which uh, you visited in um, this trip um as as an mp as an official so you know talking about the observations you have already mentioned that there is a shortage of food people have displaced people have lost their homes um what are the other things you think like we, we know the medicines and you know uh they, they, they are shortage of lots of things but um in terms of the development work in terms of the other things um you, you think the money is the only thing which can make a difference or there could be any other stuff too because there are people who are um, maybe they're like they, they have some specialized not I would not say specialized they have some industry or they have some things because we have uh, lots of uh, uh, well of Pakistanis here who are financially very sound and strong so they want to help in their um, other things as well so what do you think there are there any other things in which uh, people can help Look, initially at this point, it's it's a dealing with uh, with an emergency because people are displaced. Mm -hmm. um, they they don't have a food, they don't have a medicine, they don't have shelter, mm -hmm. they don't have clean water. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's at this point that's what uh, uh, the focus should be. Okay, and obviously at the uh, on a, on a higher level that you could. Uh, think of uh, drainage, water drainage, or um, the, the roads uh, uh, repair, or the bridges. So on, on that side, it's, it's uh, uh, because those, those would be a big project. And again, I would say, like at this point, I think it's a shelter, food, uh, things, and yeah. medicines. Uh, that is the uh, most important uh, sport at this point. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Um, I guess uh, uh, we have got a really, very really good update um, uh, from Honorable MP. Thank you so much, um, Shafkat Bhai, for uh, giving uh, this update because it, it was definitely much needed. Right? Absolutely. It was definitely needed. And as I always say that MP Shafkat Ali has always been a great support yeah. for our community and all other communities living in Misaga, basically. And we have seen you doing your level best to support the city and the people of the city, the people of the country. And uh, I'm really sure that everybody is very proud of you right now, knowing that we have bought you in a right office to do the right thing for the community and the country. And we, I've always said that, you know what, we need to have a proper diversity. And he's a, you know, a prime example of having a diverse Absolutely. Uh, diversity and a diverse officials like, who can go and understand each and every community living in the country and what they are connected to back home or the country of their heritage. Uh, thank you, Shafqat Bhai, as always, uh, for being in the forefront, helping us out. And we needed this information and we needed this clarity to where to give the funds out because there are a lot of people, a lot of organization, a lot of leaders who are asking for the fund. They have their heart in the right place, but I'm not sure if everybody knows what is the right thing to do. And that's where we need people like you to come and shed some light and, you know, show the way that where do we go? How do we go? So one thing we got out of it today is that the place Pakistan is in a bad position at this moment. And it's going to be in a bad position for a while, like the aftermath and all that. So we will be needing a continued support of the public and the government and the international entities to come out and support. And second, when you want to put the donations out, you want to put the funds out, uh, make sure you contact one of the organizations that Mr. Uh, MP Shep Katali mentioned, because the Canadian government is supporting one by one. So it's going to double the donation until that offer is there. Uh, make sure that we go there uh, again. And if there's any food needs to be or any, you know, as like, you know, anything tangible you want to send to Pakistan, which you think is going to help us, uh, the consulate, the acting consular, I believe his name is Yasser Bhatt, who's taking care of this at this yeah. moment. Yeah. So you can definitely contact him regarding that as well. Uh, but I will say at the end of the day, cash is the king. 
give out as much money as you possible because if the food is being bought in the country locally, it's also going to support the economy there, right? So let's give it out whatever we can. Let's open our heart for this. And hopefully, you know, we're going to get out of this just like we have got out of a lot more other tragedies in past in Pakistan. Thank you, MP Shafqat Ali, once again for joining us. Um, uh, before before you we go, can we can I add a uh, couple please, more things please. if you don't mind? Sure. Uh, first of all, it's just uh, all MPs from um, from Pakistani region, not only uh, those MPs, but all uh, colleagues. They're mm-hmm. very supportive of uh, this this. Um, uh, uh funding and support right. to, to pakistan uh our, our brampton caucus and peel caucus and uh, uh you know many mps and minister uh, i think it's um everyone is um uh, is very supportive of um of uh, uh sporting uh, uh to to pakistan in this dire situation so we must uh, appreciate them and uh, also um some of the uh, some of uh, messages i've received from friends that uh, certain organizations are not included uh, into uh, into that coalition so they cannot match one so my my um, my response to them uh, through you I wanted to ask them if you you think your organization is big enough and they have uh, footwork on the ground, and then you can um, you can come up with the plan. So submit your plan to uh, to uh, the, the Ministry of uh, uh, International Development. So you might be able to um, uh, qualify uh, to be included for for uh, for your work. Um, so I think it's uh, if if you can if you're not included. Please um, put forward your plan, how oh. you can help, and then you might be able to, um, you know, uh, be included in uh, other programs. So well, opportunity is there, so it's not just like pick and select by the government. Yes. Actually, yes. by the public as well. If anyone has any better idea, they can definitely come up with the exactly, yeah, and submit it. So yes, so the door is open. Uh, that's what he said. Uh, what else we need? You know, exactly. when you want to help, uh, go out and help as much as you can in any way possible. And any 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 suggestions or any questions, uh, you can uh, believe my email address, uh, and and uh, and then uh, you can reach out to me uh, anytime. And uh, uh, if you have any question, any any suggestion, any idea, mm-hmm. uh, you're most most welcome to send me an email. And that's the best thing about you that whenever we or anybody try to reach out to you, you're always there. You always respond on time and you're always been very active, very supportive. Thank you so much, uh, Chef Kadhai, for your time. Thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, definitely. Uh, we really hope that um, this thing will be, um, I mean to say again, will be resolved soon or this disaster will be over soon and Inshallah. we really hope to see the things happening uh, going towards the right direction inshallah inshallah thank you so much thank you thank you